So in this video I thought it'd be useful to go through a few different ways that you can construct Boolean expressions. That is, ways that you can make conditions that will test certain values that you have stored in variables, which you can then plug into your if statements to make decisions within your programs. So I've created four variables, a, b, c and d, and assigned them various values. And I'm just going to talk you through some of the most common operators that you can use in order to generate these Boolean expressions. So on the first line we have an expression that says is a greater than b. And if we were to directly compare those two values we've actually got a and b both equal to 2. So the answer to that question that we're asking JavaScript is is a bigger than b is false because the values are actually equal. However if you move down onto the second line you'll see the expression we have is is a bigger than or equal to b. So although the value that's stored in A is not bigger than B, but it is actually equal to B, the result that JavaScript gives us is a true value. So this is particularly useful when you're counting up to a number and you want to include that number within the range as well. But anytime you want to test for a, an equal value as well, you can just add an equals onto the end of the greater than operator. So for those first two lines, you can reverse the expression just by using the less than operator, which is simply the arrow pointing in the other direction. So moving on to the third line, we have a direct comparison here saying is A exactly equal to B? And you see that gives us the result of true. I'll explain the reason why we need to use three equals in just a second. But if you look at the line below, you'll see I have an expression where I'm comparing A to B, but saying is A not equal to B? So the exclamation mark followed by two equal signs makes up the not equal to operator. And as you can see, the result on the right hand side is false. So on the line below that, you can see I've done a comparison to say is A equal to C. So this time you'll note I've only used two equal signs. Now we're currently getting a false value back, and if you look at the values that are actually stored in A and C, you can see we're comparing a data type of number, which is equal to 2, which is stored in A, to a string data type of 1, which is stored in the variable C. So we're basically asking is the number 2 equal to the string 1? And we're currently getting a false value back, but if I change the value that's stored in C to a 2, you'll see the line with A is equal to C is now showing true. So that makes sense, we're comparing 2 and 2 and we're getting a true result back, but the double equal sign doesn't care about what data type is held in each variable. If we were actually to change that to a triple equal, you'll see it changes to false. And the short answer to that is the triple equals will test what type of data type is stored in each variable and will only return true if the data types are the same. So removing that third equal sign doesn't perform that check and although the data types in A and C are different, the values they contain match so the expression resolves with true. So moving on to the line below that, you'll see we're using that triple equal sign to check if D is equal to open which is true because that's the string that we have stored in D. And it's just to highlight the fact that it's always best to use the triple equal sign where possible, just so that you ensure that you're checking the same data type that's stored in both variables. And then our final line, we've actually got an expression there saying is A equal to one, uh, which should actually be false because A is equal to two in the variable declaration above. But we've wrapped the expression in parentheses and then put the not operator in front of it, which is the exclamation mark. So that will actually inverse the response that we get from the expression. If I was to remove that not operator, you'll see the final response that we get is now false because a is not equal to 1. But just to highlight that the not operator is a really convenient way to invert the result of an expression. So in the next lesson, we'll look at how to combine expressions together using AND and OR operators.